My newest video game essay, Shoot, Jump, Run, Born into Metroid and Cocaine, is now available at Amazon for 99 cents. Do you like to read? Prove it! According to Tenchu Stealth Assassins, all guards are starving, apparently, and will chase randomly appearing balls of rice. That's super convenient. More like Tenchu. <laughs> Hey future Caleb, buckle into that head jar because this is one of those videos where I probably will just ramble on and on about a topic that only present Caleb cares about. You've surely moved on from being weighed down by useless thought, but you don't have arms, so you cannot turn off this video. Sorry future Caleb. I was thinking about AI in video games, specifically the artificial intelligence that governs NPC and enemy behavior. More specifically, the NPC enemy behavior in Tenchu Stealth Assassins. More, more specifically, the NPC enemy behavior that causes inept guards to abandon their posts to chase balls of rice on the ground. What kind of idiot guard is so willing to ditch their security responsibilities for edible litter? The correct answer is, of course, the same kind of goldfish-brained idiot guard who isn't concerned that the ball of rice wasn't there just two seconds ago. But taken outside of the context of the questionable security guard hiring practices and Tenchu land, I think it's called, there's an interesting dissonance here that I'd like to explore. I want to talk about the tension between the human-like enemies and their purported human-like actions, and the limitations that we as players require of our in-game enemies. A truly intelligent enemy NPC is not what we want. We don't even want an artificial intelligent NPC enemy. We want scripted behaviors based on shortcut heuristics with game balance, not realism, being the end goal. And to be fair, enemy AI in video games is a bit of a misnomer. True artificial intelligence implies machine learning, and video game enemy artificial intelligence is really, as I said above, just a collection of scripted behaviors that account for a bunch of different enemy states. For example, if player is with an X pixels of enemy, then enter the hunting state. If enemy's health is below Y percent, then enter the flee state. But I'll still continue to say AI because that's the accepted term, and I already sound like a douche. Back to Tenchu and why I felt this scene with the dumb enemy chasing down a ball of rice was so funny. This is where the dissonance I mentioned earlier comes into play because we recognize this character as human, we are encouraged to expect human-like behavior from it. And chasing a random rice ball is not human-like behavior for most humans, I guess. So it's funny. This exemplifies what's called the benign violation theory of humor. Things are funny when they subvert our expectations, but only when they don't hurt anyone. This guy isn't a real person, so nobody was hurt. But imagine if this enemy character looked even more like a human. Then chasing the rice ball would elevate from simply funny to hilarious. Let's visit Metal Gear Solid 5 and the series favorite disguise, the cardboard box. Realistic looking enemies, convincing enemy behavior, absurd cardboard box, disguise, hilarious. But interestingly enough, because of the realistic portrayal of the human-like enemies, our laughter is curbed slightly. Benign violation is tampered when we're meant to be invested in what's being harmed, even if only superficially. That's why laughing at a new story about mass murder is sociopathic behavior. And maybe why bullies who laugh when they make kids cry should be taken to therapy. But that's a different soapbox. But we gamers demand so many conflicting things. We want realism, but we also want enemy AI to respect our need for fun, meaning we don't want our enemies to be super smart. We need our inept guards to eat discarded poisoned rice balls. We need our machine gun toting soldiers to ignore a conspicuous cardboard box. Otherwise, the game wouldn't be fun. It's like the Uncanny Valley, except not. See, the Uncanny Valley is a term used to describe that point when human-like characters stop being emotive and relatable and become creepy. I've got an old video with a much younger Caleb linked in the description below that goes more into this concept if you are interested. But come back to this video, dang it. What I'm talking about, this dissonance between how we feel a human-like character should act and our need for human-like characters to not act human-like, is less an uncanny valley and more an unfun plateau. NPC enemies are allowed a generous range of displaying human-like characteristics, but once the enemy NPCs become too human, too unpredictable, too smart, the fun would decrease very 
quickly. Now to be fair, I cannot think of a game that is too realistic in terms of human-like characteristics on NPC enemies to be fun. So this concept is truly just conceptual. If you have any examples of games that might fall off this unfun plateau, please let me know in the comments below. I really, really, really want to carry on this type of conversation. This is the sort of dialogue I want to have on this channel. I record myself having probably dumb ideas and I count on the people in the comments below to correct me on those dumb ideas. I'm a martyr. The Unfun Plateau highlights one of the many conflicts game designers have to wrestle with. And part of me credits the longevity of pixelated graphical styles in games to this dissonance, and perhaps why PS1 and Nintendo 64 era limited polygons may never have the same shot at life beyond their initial generation. Now, I'm not so dumb as to think nostalgia won't trump all, but I'm careful to think this ludo-anthropomorphic dissonance, I'll call it, isn't strong. Oh, sweet. Kit Kat. <laughs> oh, 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 God. oh, I was supposed to be on guard duty. Thanks to you, present viewer, for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to make sure you don't miss future videos. If you're still watching this video, you obviously like it, right? So it only makes sense to subscribe, and please, please, please contribute some comments in the comment section below.